The Star Destroyer classification was officially first used by the Galactic Republic to classify a ship as a length of 1,000 to 2,000 meters, though we know there were a few exceptions to this rule. This classification continued to be used by succeeding galactic governments, including the Galactic Empire and the New Republic. First are the Venator-class Star Destroyers. They were extensively used by the Galactic Republic during the Clone Wars. They were designed to quickly transport troops and vehicles, as well as to act as a starfighter carrier, being able to carry almost 500 starfighters, giving it the highest starfighter capacity on this list. Although they were capable to put up a fight against other capital ships, their armament mostly consisted of laser cannons, which were designed to mostly combat enemy starfighters. Second is the Victory One class Star Destroyer. They were introduced in the middle of the Clone Wars and were designed primarily for planetary defense and assault and to combat other capital ships. A newer model called the Victory Two class Star Destroyer was later created, which had newer engines for faster acceleration and speed it was also outfitted with ion cannons and more turbo blasters. Both ships were used by the Galactic Empire, but were soon replaced by the more powerful Imperial class Star Destroyers. Third are the Imperial First Class Star Destroyers. They saw limited use in the Clone Wars, but were eventually widely used by the Galactic Empire to enforce order throughout the galaxy. They were designed to decimate other capital ships, and even entire worlds through orbital bombardment. They were also heavily armored and shielded, being able to take a beating from most other capital ships. Though they did have a slower hyperdrive, taking twice as long to get to a destination than the two previous ships shown, the newer model Imperial II class Star Destroyer had reinforced armor, stronger deflector shields, and greater firepower than the Imperial I class Star Destroyer. Fourth are the Interdictor class Star Destroyers. Their most notable features were the four gravity well projectors, which were used to prevent ships from escaping through hyperspace. They were even able to capture ships already in hyperspace by ripping them out of it. They were primarily used in raids and invasions. Because of their capabilities, they were high priority targets for enemy ships. Fifth are the Gladiator First Class Star Destroyers. They were long range patrol ships and were used to subjugate pirates and smugglers. They also acted as starfighter carriers and had multiple hangars, with a large one in the front allowing for multiple starfighters to exit and enter with ease. There were later the Gladiator Second Class Star Destroyers, but it is unknown what made them different. Sixth are the Secutor Class Star Destroyers. They served primarily as starfighter carriers, being able to carry up to 144 starfighters. Compared to other Imperial Star Destroyers, they were lightly armored and had low firepower. Seventh are the Tector class Star Destroyers. They were basically Imperial class Star Destroyers that had their hangars removed and replaced with additional armor. Although this gave them better protection against enemy ships, it resulted in them not being able to carry starfighters. Eighth are the Prosecutor class Star Destroyers. They were distinguishable by three massive gun batteries that were lined up on top of a huge reactor dome under the ship. They were used to escort larger ships. Ninth are the Nebula-class Star Destroyers. They were used by the New Republic and were the largest and most powerful ships of the New Republic fleet. They were designed to defeat an Imperial Star Destroyer in a one-on-one -on -one battle. They were heavily armored and armed and were primarily used to engage enemy capital ships. Tenth are the Republic-class Star Destroyers. They were also used by the New Republic and had a unique bulbous-like shape. They had tremendous firepower for their small size but a trade-off for this was their reduced cargo capacity. Eleventh are the Bakura-class Star Destroyers. They were equipped with hyperwave inertial momentum sustainers, which allowed them to escape interdiction fields, which prevented ships from using hyperspace. Twelfth are the Pelion-class Star Destroyers. They were first used by the Fell Empire and were designed to incorporate elements from the Executor-class Dreadnoughts and the Imperial-class Star Destroyers. They were considered to be one of the most powerful warships during their time, having one of the greatest armaments. They were often used as command ships, leading other ships in their fleets. Thirteenth are the Imperius-class Star Destroyers. They were first used by Darth Krait's Galactic Empire. They were purposely designed to be able to overpower any other warship during their time. They also had very powerful shields, being able to even take a beating from some entire fleets. Fourteenth are the Aggressor class Star Destroyers. They were equipped with two powerful guns which fired large ion pulses followed by plasma shots. 
The ion pulses disabled the shields of the enemy ships, and the plasma shots that followed dealt tremendous damage to the enemy ships. Fifteenth are the Narshada Star Destroyers. They were designed to be a hybrid between the Venator class and Imperial class Star Destroyers. They were small compared to the other Star Destroyers. The armor on the ship could extend and retract around the ship itself, providing more protection in certain areas while weakening other areas of the ship. Sixteenth are the Resurgent class Star Destroyers. They were used by the First Order. They were almost twice the length of Imperial Star Destroyers, and were designed purposely to combat other capital ships, possessing over 3,000 turbo lasers and ion cannons. They also were used as starfighter carriers, troop transports, and command ships. The next four Star Destroyer classes don't have any images of themselves, so instead, we'll just put epic space battle art in place for them. First are the Turbulent class Star Destroyers. They were built by the Imperial Remnant and were often referred to as Pocket Star Destroyers due to their small size. Because of their small size, they were more maneuverable than some of the other Star Destroyers. Second are the Soren Nan class Star Destroyers. One of these ships was used as a testbed for the new gunnery and engine technologies. That's all we know of this class. Third are the Rejuvenator class Star Destroyers. It was mostly used by the Galactic Alliance during the Yuuzhan Vong War. Nothing else is known about this class. Last are the Chiss Star Destroyers. They were used by the Chiss Ascendancy and resembled Victory class Star Destroyers, but were slightly longer and slimmer. They also didn't have any obvious command superstructure, which denied enemies from an easy target. Also, before you guys ask, the Super Star Destroyers, despite their name, were usually considered to be dreadnoughts due to their massive lengths, and the name itself was used to distinguish them from Star Destroyers. Also, just because the ship was a dagger shape didn't automatically make it a Star Destroyer, which is why the Acclimator class Assault Ships or Harrower class Dreadnoughts were not included, as they were considered to be Assault Ships or Dreadnoughts respectively. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.